Good morning, residents of Summer House, and welcome to Sunday morning worship this morning. My name is Chaplain Les, and I will spend the next few minutes with you doing a worship service in which we will pray, talk about the Bible, read some passages from the Bible, and leave you with a blessing. So let's join together in worship this morning. Join me in the opening prayer. Let's pray together. God, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the earth was formed, long before there were people on this planet, you were fashioning life in its myriad forms. Out of the billions of years you have been creating, our lives have come to this moment of meeting. We stand in awe before you, amazed to discover that you care about tiny blips on the screen of eternity. Oh God, we want our lives to count for something. Show us how we fit into your plans. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to worship, and the invitation is to continue to worship and experience God's presence together during this time of worship. The call to worship is this, gather together to hear stories of faith and courage. Listen for the ways God has acted among us. Our ancestors in the faith listened for God's word. They dared believe God's promises. Leaders like Moses and Paul saw evidence of God's work. They believed they were face to face with God's truth. They looked beyond the present moment. They lived for dreams not yet realized. Many felt God's love in knowing Jesus. They experienced a new relationship with neighbors. We have come seeking community centered in Christ. We want to experience God's presence as we worship together. Thanks be to God. Now, the call to confession this morning makes reference to an Old Testament reading, an Old Testament story in which God spoke to Moses. You see, apparently Moses was God's prophet, and God was able to speak to Moses one-on-one. -on -one. They connected. Well, the call to confession refers to that story and that experience in the Old Testament in which God and Moses spoke together. The call is this. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, You shall be holy, for I, your God, am holy. But you know, often being holy is not attractive to us. We don't like it. We scoff, and sometimes rightly so, at the pretensions of saintliness from those around us who we know aren't very saintly. But often, we are not any better. That's me. And we are guilty of preferring the company of sinners to being holy. Sometimes wickedness seems more attractive than righteousness, and we accommodate to this world system. Those are the things we want to change with God's help. Let's confess to God in the presence of one another. As I say the prayer of confession, pray it with me together in your hearts. Let's pray. Oh God, very often we have missed your signs and wonders because we are so busy creating our own. Those around us who pretend to be your prophets offer little to which we aspire. Yet, 
we would pray with the psalmist, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Where is the meaning we have missed in all our striving? Does Jesus hold the key when he says, love God with all your being and love your neighbor as yourself? Oh God, we long to make sense out of life. Help us to follow your way. Through Christ we pray, amen. And now, I invite you to just take a moment and spend it in silence before God. In your own private confession, just between you and God. It takes courage to question the way things are, especially when present arrangements are to our benefit. We who are privileged seldom notice those who suffer and are shamefully mistreated, yet we cannot ignore them. We can only suppress knowledge of the evil around us for a little while. God is even now nudging us gently, caring tenderly for us amid our confusion and inner turmoil. The favor of God is upon us, entrusting us with the gospel for our own lives and for the world. Receive forgiveness and blessing as good news because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now the words of the Gloria Patre. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. We're going to read from the Bible. And as we prepare to read them from the Bible, let's pray that God will help us understand it. You see, the Bible is a spiritual book. It can only be understood spiritually. So we pray and ask God to help us understand it. So join me in prayer as we pray together that God will help us understand the reading from the Bible this morning. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Lord, as your word is read and proclaimed this morning, help us to turn our hearts to you and hear what you will speak, for you speak peace to your people. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The first reading from the Old Testament, from the Jewish Bible, from the Hebrew Scriptures, the first reading is from Deuteronomy. Now, we know that the word Deuteronomy means second law. Essentially, what the book of Deuteronomy does is simply repeat the law that was already put down for the people of God in the book of Exodus. So Deuteronomy is second law, a repeat of the law. And so there's a lot of legalisms that are contained in Deuteronomy, as in the other books of Moses. So I invite you to listen for the word of the Lord from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea the Negeb and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. The Lord said to him, 
This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired. And his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of Moab, the period of mourning for Moses, was ended. Joshua, the son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since, never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent to him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, just briefly, this legacy about Moses is amazing, isn't it? Moses was a prophet of God, and God said, never before and never since has there been a prophet rise up in the land of Israel to lead the people of Israel, such as Moses. Moses was God's person. But a couple of things are really, really interesting here about Moses. Number one, he was 120 years old when he died. He was not a young man. But it says that Moses still had energy and he had promise and he had hope. Now that's my paraphrase. It's not written there, but that's what I see in it. He had energy, he had promise, and he had hope, I believe. And he was able to lead Israel. I think what this is telling us is there's no such thing as being too old or too young to do the will of God. Sometimes we think that our time for doing God's work is over or that God can't use us because we're too old or too young or too something. But you see, God used Moses until the day he died. And I think God calls us to do the work that God has called us to do, regardless of our age, regardless of our own perceived weaknesses, regardless of our own perceived inadequacies. God calls us, God calls you to do the work that God has called you to do and to enjoy doing that work. And it doesn't matter your age or anything else. God calls you. That's what we learned from Moses. Now, the second reading is in the book of Thessalonians, the letter of Thessalonians that Paul wrote to one of his churches. Paul says in Thessalonians, this is the writing of St. Paul to the church in Thessalonica. He wrote, You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God 
to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, God is our witness. We never came with words of flattery or with pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, that we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, in this reading, we have Paul, the evangelist, who planted churches, talking to one of the churches that he had planted. You see, Paul went to the town of Thessalonica and he started a church there and then he left and left the church under the leadership of someone else. And Paul would write letters to the churches that he started, that he founded, and those letters were written for a specific purpose. I believe that we can glean from these letters things that apply to our lives. One of the things that I think we can see in this letter is, number one, how important it was for Paul to say good things to the people. Paul talks about how good they are in Thessalonica. And I believe that we are called also to say and think good things about other people. We're to think good things and say good things and represent good things. And Paul reminds the Thessalonians how good they are. And secondly, he talks about relationship. He talks about how important it is for him to connect with the people of that church because he really cares for them. I think God calls all of us as the people of God to care for one another, to constantly care for one another and to express that care and to show in our attitudes toward one another and in our words about one another how much we honestly care. So Paul spoke good things. We also are to speak good things. Paul really cared for the people. We also are called to care for one another. That's from the reading to the Thessalonians. And now, finally... From the gospel, the gospel of St. Matthew, the gospel reading this morning from St. Matthew. Listen for the word of the Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the entire law and prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were still gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think, he said, of the Messiah? Whose son is he? 
They answered, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Now, if David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? And no one had an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Now, in this reading from the gospel, we have the words of Jesus telling us that all that's really necessary is to love one another and to love God. You see, in the Old Testament, in Israel, obeying the law, adherence to the law, and honoring the law was of ultra importance. It was one of the most important things that people could do was to obey and honor and respect the law. But Jesus said that the entire law is summed up in loving God and loving one another. I believe that the whole purpose of the law is to lead people in the direction of being able to love each other and being able to love God. So God is calling us in the gospel reading to simply be able to express and show love to God and to one another. So the call then from the gospel would be for each one of us to find a way to learn how to express and love more our God and to express and learn how to love from the heart our brothers and sisters. That is the entire gospel. If everyone loved everyone, which they don't, and obviously they never will, but if they did, then people on this planet would get along without so many laws. Do you realize how many laws there are? Do you realize that we have people in our government, state, national, and local, who are paid tons of money just to interpret the laws and to make new laws and to change the old laws? Laws are so much a part of who we are, but in the commonwealth of God, if we simply love one another and love God, then our need for and our adherence to laws will totally be changed. You see, if we love one another, we automatically obey every law that's out there. So the goal isn't to figure out what the laws are. The goal is to figure out how to love God and love one another. And I believe this is the message God would have all of us know and all of us learn and all of us take with us, not only today, but forever. The law of God is that we love God and love one another. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for loving us. And we thank you for calling us to love you. And we pray, God, that you will help us to learn how to love you and to learn how to love others. Daily we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, those of you who would like to, I invite you to join me in the affirmation of faith, which is the Apostles' Creed. So if you'd like to, join me in the Apostles' Creed. This expresses what we believe. I believe 
in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Join me if you would, if you'd like to, in the words of the doxology. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God, above you heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. We're going to pray together, and I invite you, if you have any needs or concerns on your minds or on your hearts, I invite you to think about those things while we're praying and let those things be part of our prayer together. So let's pray. God in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful group of people, and we ask that you will address all the concerns and prayers that they have on their hearts and minds today, that they might see those prayers answered and those concerns addressed. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. People of God, and you are indeed people of God, it's so wonderful to be able to speak with you on a Sunday morning and to share a time of worship with you because we know that being together as community and experiencing a time of worship is a very positive and wonderful thing. So people of God, and you are people of God, every one of you, I want you to know that God loves you. God always will love you. And there's no way in the world that God will ever stop loving you. People of God, go out into your world in peace. Honor everyone rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of God, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the presence of God's Holy Spirit, be with each one of you, now and forever. Amen. People of God, experience God's presence and enjoy your day. Amen.